Goedenavond, dames en heren. Het is Hans Nel van uh, Wolfswind Studio. <laughs> Please forgive me. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that was my native language, Afrikaans, Afrikaans by the way. Um, Hans, Hans Nel speaking here from Cape Town, South Africa. Okay, um, I'm going to talk to you tonight about. Audio Director version 6. Okay, uh, a bit about myself. I, uh, I work as the composer and arranger of the South African Navy Band, and I also have my private studio at home, Wolfswind Studios. Okay, I'm a publisher, music pub publisher, still uh, building my website. It's been going on for what, like five years already. I still don't get the time. Okay. I sell some music on Sheet Music Plus. Okay. Um, but anyway, so much for that. Um, I was thinking about talking about Audio Director. Uh, I discovered it when I installed my Power DVD software. And um, I found that this software was also installed. Okay, I usually use a door which is Cubase. Okay, I first use Sonar, um, and then, I'm, then I moved over to Cubase, as I'm also using Dorico, the uh, music notation of the software. Actually, I use Sibelius and Dorico. And now I'm in the finale as well, which I try to avoid. Okay, um, audio, audio director. Okay, audio director is is a, like a, a scaled down version of a door, um, which is like Cubase. Okay, um, it is, I think. For for a musician that is not heavily into into uh, I shall once put it put it in English uh, not heavily into film scoring and sound production and stuff like that. It is uh, more something you plug your guitar in your mic and you would. Um, Can somebody tell me how to kill a dog? Anyway, I'm not serious, but uh, that uh, canine has been irritating me all day already. He just can't seem to be quiet. Anyway, enough of that. All right. Um, where was I? I know. Where was I? Th okay. This is more for 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 somebody wants to make a, a, a quick song uh, apply some effects to it and then uh, export it to a CD or or upload it to YouTube or something like that okay um, I can show you Cubase quickly just to give an idea no, it's talking nonsense Let's just use a simple piano vocal score. Okay, here is Cubase. Okay, as you can see, it basically looks the same. You've got your your tracks here, your, your different tracks. You see, uh, all your consoles, your your menus and your timeline, you see, and then uh, your your virtual instrument tracks, and instruments and loops and all that stuff. This is heavy stuff. Um, Cubase, Cubase is, is really a 
This is what Hans Zimmer also used uh, for his movies, like like uh, Pirates of Caribbean and uh, Gladiator, all that stuff. Okay, he uses Cubase. Okay, so this is called a door, a desktop audio workstation. It it is um, it is uh, for big time musicians. Um, you get different kinds. You also get another one called Pro Tools, which uh, Avid sells with uh, its notation software, which is Sibelius, uh, Cubase, and Dorico. The notation software uh, goes together, and then okay, you get Sonar and so forth. Okay. But enough of, of this, this is Cubase, okay, so normally I, I use this one, but as you can see, Cubase is still running, okay, now it's off, okay, here we have Audio Director, okay, I suppose Cyberlink created the software, um, to create audio files for its movie software called Power Director. Okay, um, I only wished they could have joined these two, uh, two apps together. Uh, Power Director, uh, uh, which you can create movies with. Excellent software, by the way. And audio director which you can apply effects and orchestral sounds and stuff to your movies okay so anyway let's start first of all it's basically just a windows software with a file menu all the basic stuff to it uh, opening or creating a new uh, project and importing media save your product produce produce is when you want to actually produce your final mix okay uh, to an audio file or a video file okay and and so forth okay and here's your edit menu the normal edit menu with some extra your preferences and adding more tracks and timeline markers which you don't have to worry about here because you find them here as well okay uh, this is your view menu menu uh, which we'll get to in time if they are time or is time a quick way to save a project and here is your uh, settings or preference wheel where you can set your preferences okay all right yeah I've signed into my account at cyberlink okay now you get your workspace this is where you th you import all your clips all your sound effects and clips and stuff goes here okay yeah you have this is like your effects rack like in Cubase but uh, a much easier way to work with okay here you can adjust your audio itself all kind of properties of your audio and here you apply some effects to your audio okay we'll get to that, to that just now all right this is a left and a right ear channel one channel view okay which is the edit view of a certain clip okay over here you'll find just now you'll see it your volume envelopes and your panning envelope okay and your effects and volume here they are you see your volume and your panning envelopes i 
think you can hide it as well. Uh, all right, but we'll come to this later. This is your uh, when you want to restore some dirty tracks or something like that. We'll come here, but we'll concentrate on the mixing tab. Okay, here you'll find you'll see like like in Cubase, you'll see here are your tracks. It's giving you three tracks. Mahala, which is, I think, a black term for free, and your master track. Okay, uh, whatever you do here affects all your tracks. Okay, so if you put it louder, then all your tracks goes louder. Okay, so you don't mess m around much with your master track. Okay, you'll pretty, pretty much leave it alone. You'll just make sure that your volume over here is in such a position that your master levels does not reach into the red. It must stay in, in the green or decibels because if it goes into the red, you'll get distortion on your sound. Believe me, I've learned a, a hard lesson last few weeks. I created a, a mock-up of um, of uh, the the syncing of the SS Mendy, and um, excuse me, I've got a little bit of a cold. Um, so I, I didn't have time to set up Cubase and stuff like that. Uh, so I, I need needed to make a quick mock-up of nine movements so that the, the officer commanding of the Navy Band could hear what it sounds like, you know? So I qu quickly set up this thing and and made a mock-up of, of, of uh, the sinking of the Mendy, which is what, what we're going to go into in a moment, in a moment or two, okay? I just, just want to explain to you the layout of this thing first, okay? These buttons here, zoom into the tracks. This makes the track wider. Okay, and this wider this way or narrower. And these buttons, now be careful, sometimes this makes the software crash, so I don't play, play around too much with this. But as you can see, it, it makes the tracks um, horizontal, no, vertically, up and down, thinner and wider. Okay, and this uh, uh, resets the whole workspace here, so that all your clips can be seen in one view together. So if your clips goes beyond the screen, and you push this button, then everything zooms so that you can see your, your whole project in the section here. Okay, so let's go through a few buttons here. Okay, this is your your um, your timeline, as they call it. And what do we call it? Your time... <laughs> also timeline, it looks like, or, or, or your... Your progress bar or something. Okay, I don't know what to say. How they call it in English, but this line moves as you play along to show you where you are on your timeline. It's a timeline on the timeline. <laughs> okay, um, this timeline can be set to other time codes which is uh, seconds and milliseconds, which is uh, ideal for when you're making movies and you want to use timestamps and stuff for, for certain scenes and stuff. Uh, you'll, you'll use this in conjunction with markers. You will set a, a marker. So if an action scene would start over here, you'll set the marker and 
right rule. You would say um, just an action scene or something. Action starts. Okay, and then you would see there you are your marker and it says action starts. You see? Now eventually your whole project will be full of markers. Okay, and you can then quickly go to them by saying view all markers and it will list all your markers here. And, and if you select a marker and say okay, it will jump to that marker. Okay, that that's it about markers. Now, how do you okay, remove all markers? All right. Now that's for the time code. You can also set it to bars and beats, which is uh, over here. You'll select is it a four four or a three four or something like that. So your piece would be. Uh, this is beats per minute. Okay, you can tap your piece is 120 beats per minute, which is basically a marching tempo. Or you can set it to any kind of tempo your piece is in. I'm not quite sure why one would want to use uh, a bar of beats that's a system. unless you're composing maybe a military march or something. But I normally use uh, notation, notation software to do that kind of thing. Okay, so that is it for, for time code and be here. You've got your mixer sliders for those tracks. This is your master track. Okay, and then your three other tracks. Those three pink, pink, and two brown ones. Okay. And, and uh, I never use that. I just use it over here. It's simpler, easier. Okay. Then, um, let's see. Okay. So, now, before I start uh, explaining these things, let's just quickly run over a few things again, just, uh, just as a reminder. You have these four uh, tabs here, okay? This is edit tab. In, uh, actually, it, uh, audio director or cyberlink actually in all the it software calls these little panels, they call them rooms, okay? So, this is actually the edit room, okay, edit room tab. So, in this room, you can adjust and trim and cut and enhance dig dig uh, sorry, digital audio, and you can do much more um, kind of things in, in this ed edit room, okay. Uh, then, as I said, in this restore room, uh, you can like repair audio clips uh, using um, all kinds of um, uh, tools like click removal and um, noise reduction features and you can manually fix audio using uh, like visual repair tools and so, so forth okay yeah uh, the creativity is very obvious but, but like I said I want to focus on the mix mixing the room okay okay so like I said this is your timeline okay um, I remember now what this is called this is called a slider <laughs> obviously your timeline slider all right okay let's just go through uh, uh, this ta these tabs over here this is uh, to configure your audio profile settings for your mixer room okay this button here is to add a track you could add also tracks by right clicking underneath your master track and select um, add a track here you can hide this ma master track okay 
this is your markers uh, a button you'll use it to add mark markers to this timeline I'll show you later how th that is done or used okay you cut and paste and copy uh, buttons over here uh, this is your delete or remove button a cyberlink chose to uh, not use Microsoft conventions they say remove instead of delete okay just a little knife over here is to cut or slice or split uh, uh, what do you call it a clip if you import a clip and you want to cut a clip into a certain size or cut off an in section or something you will cut it with that knife I'll show you how to do it later all right this is your normalized button do that later and uh, uh, this is your uh, automated dialogue alignment if you have time we'll go into that also and this is uploading um, uh, your your files to di director zone or cyberlink cloud or whatever okay and produce is to mix all your clips in this room into one file such as a WAV file or an mp3 file or something now um, something I haven't said before I, I told you this is like a watered down version of a door but um, I just want to say we should not underestimate the auto di uh, audio director it can actually uh, import a movie as well you know and then you'll get up here a, a movie track you know uh, with its corresponding um, audio track beneath it and then over here in a corner you will see actually the, the movie as well so if you have if you've made a movie in uh, power director then you can actually import it into this audio director software or app and you will see it over here and then, then you can add it your sound or your effects and sounds to that movie but I feel it should be done the other way around uh, I, I feel you, um, you should create your movie in power director and then have this let me show you uh, if, if you would open cybering power director yes this one And go to timeline mode all right you see you have your timeline here already so if you could have uh, or, uh, audio director tracks here as well here you have your your your, your movie clips and your sound clips but if you I think if you double click a sound clip But it should, I think it should be like that. You should be able to double click a sound track and it will open up the mixer that uh, they call it the rooms, call it rooms. So um, here is your mixer room, you see? Now I think, or I believe, or I, I would have preferred audio director to open up in this section see uh, you have your movie here and certain tracks like your effects track and your soundtrack and your narration tracks where you have somebody speaking into the, uh, the movie could then be managed here which is audio director inside this power director software you see uh, I feel it's uh, to have two separate apps it's, it's, uh, it's a bit too much you could actually do it all from here you see because you already have your timeline and now you can uh, apply all your effects and, and stuff like that as you can see you have the same kind of tabs 
as an audio director. So basically, you can join these two together. I have audio director as a, a type of a plugin. You see, so so uh, yeah, so you can add audio director tracks here as well. But anyway, so far I haven't done that. So you have a separate piece of software for your audio, and then you can load your power director movie in here. Just the other way around. All right, let's see. Now you get your tracks. These are your audio tracks, and you can load these tracks with clips, like in Power um, Director, but in this case it is audio, all audio clips, and I think you can add one video track to it as well. As well, okay. So let's start. What I what I'm going to do is I'm going to load a project I did for the Navy Band. If I can find it open, okay. I'm going to load this in movement six to nine. will save a lot of time having to go find clips now and you know pulling them into the rooms and stuff like that okay this is quite a large project so some some data is missing I wonder what it is okay but anyway you'll still get the idea this is the whole project if I click this button here you'll see everything is shown if I expand it you see um, you can actually see the clips in a far better way okay so you'll see uh, I've numbered them this is the eighth movement and over here you can see the aftermath it's the seventh movement and then the sixth movement is right in the beginning. The collision. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Uh, this is about the SS Mendy. Just a very quick uh, little history. In uh, 1917, from Cape Town Harbor, a troop ship from Britain left the harbor. I think it was May, if I correct and with more than 600 uh, black black men from uh, South Africa uh, chosen to fight in the First World War <coughs> sorry uh, for in for King George the fifth I think it was um, in France so uh, the British said if they will fight for them they might get certain benefits or something like that okay so the black dudes they were on the ship and uh, they they were on their way to Britain first where they stopped at Plymouth and then they uh, resupplied the ship and then they were on their way to France and then uh, one evening or actually early morning around five o'clock in the morning a huge cargo ship called the SS Darrow speeding very fast through the English Channel uh, it was a foggy evening so you couldn't see far and you know those years they weren't like radars and stuff like that or maybe proper ones <coughs> Sorry, I've got a bit of a cold here. The winter is just at the end here now. Okay, anyway, so th this data was, data was speeding through the waters, and um, the captain 
feared Hubert, obviously, so he wanted to get through that English Channel as fast as possible. But the, the, in the meantime, the, the SS Mendy, with her black troops, uh, accompanied by a British frigate, I think it was, um, the HMS Brisk, uh, the, uh, those two ships were on their way to France. And then this big cargo ship uh, couldn't turn out of the way fast enough and hit the SS Mendy on the, in the side more than 20 feet into a, with a big gap of gash. Uh, the thing filled up with water very, very quickly. All the men fell out of their bunks and there was chaos, chaos on the ship. Pretty much like what happened in the Titanic. And uh, the, uh, the, the SS Mendy sank in like 20 minutes. So the water is like freezing. <coughs> Sorry, uh, the water's freezing, and and uh, more than six hundred black men died that evening in the freezing water. I think uh, the HMS Brisk could save a li little more than a hundred men. I think hundred and twenty men could be saved. Excuse my accent and stuff. I'm um, actually English is not, not my first language, but um, I'm doing my best. Okay. Um, yeah. So that is uh, a quick history. Of what happened then? Now twen uh, it's 2017. It's a hundred year, hundred years later, and uh, we are uh, well not celebrating. But it's more a memorial, uh, more uh, a memory, or yeah, a memory of the of the SS Mendes found uh, sinking or foundering, and the Navy Band they have a concert every October around the 24th in Pretoria, South Africa's capital, at the University of South Africa UNISA in the ZK Matthew Hall. Uh, the chief of the South African Navy has his gala evening every Saturday, I think it's the last Saturday of October, he has his gala evening and uh, uh, the commander of the uh, Navy band asked me to to to, to like compose uh, an enactment of what happened, where they were recruited that this movement won until five and then um, from movement six from here on is the actual crash and sinking to the tribute at the end, where it ends in the epilogue. Epilogue, okay. So um, they, they, they are gonna play this piece of music, which is printed out in Sibelius. I wanted to use Dorico, but it, um, it's still a bit too difficult for me to do to use, so I used the Sibelius. And uh, the parts are printed, and they are currently practicing like crazy to, to learn the music. <coughs> okay, so that is a quick history of the, of the music. Um, so the commander wanted to, to have a, have a mock-up, you know. Um, he wanted to know what the music sounded like. So he's got a score, the big A3 score in front of him. And I created this uh, audio file. I, like I said, I didn't use Cubase. It's too much of a setup and stuff like that to, um, in the short period of time. So I used audio. I found it on, I found it on, my, on my hard drive drive I never knew I had it so I discovered it and I thought wait let me try it out and excellent it works quite well okay as as a as a, uh, a narrow door a smaller door if you would like to call it that way it's got all the main basic features to make a quick mock-up all right the sounds I used is not the real Navy band or Neil or a real orchestra. 
it is a, a VST I've used virtual instruments okay so um, this track is the band what they will play that evening is in this track all the sound effects that that will be played that evening through the mixing disc is on this track I will take it with him and then play all the sound effects of the crash and the water and all those things this is Johan he's my uh, best friend he's a baritone a soloist a singer uh, uh, he's, got, he's got an excellent uh, sorry excellent voice he's not not like like me uh, who have difficult speaking I can compose and write but speaking and singing is not my forte but anyway um, you are um, gr uh, gracefully did it for free for me and he narrated all the the words in this track for me he also sang a few songs uh, one of them is a Zulu song Zulu words which he had to learn in something like an, an hour or something okay so uh, th those clips, clips were all added to this timeline okay so there's the band and uh, the sound effects your uh, aunt's narration track and some random clips here where I decided I needed more uh, more more space for more clips like over here I've got an extra one for Johan which I didn't use because he's empty oh no it's not ah uh, that's right this is where he sang his Zulu song I'll explain all this yellow these yellow lines shortly it's very interesting all right that that's that for now let me explain to you what what's going on over here. Here you have. Oh, it is called mixing tools. The section here it's called your mixing mixing tools. This is what uh, Cyberlink labels these track headers kind of okay so here you can type in so over here I can type in uh, sound effects okay and this is Johan I can type in narration let me see over here some more sound effects and this is where Johan is singing all right track number five what is on this track not out oh, there I'm not quite sure what this is, so I can solo this track. It means only this track will play. Okay, so now it brings me to this button, these buttons here. A solo button mutes all the other tracks and allow only this one track to be played. That's what solo means, okay? So now I want to hear what's going on in this track. So I'll, I will solo it and then play it to hear it.
right, so this is the band. Now you see, I had too much Red Bull that, that one day, or something. <laughs> it should have been over there, where the band is playing. Now why I put it here, no idea. All uh, right, I know why, I know why. It is because in the tribute, it ends, let me solo, solo this track as well, and unsolo that one. You hear, this is also the band. You hear, it ends. that bass drum roll at the end and over here so I needed this clip here because as you can see the bass drum will continue to roll into the epilogue you hear there so the effect will be this So um, the idea was to have the bass drum rolling while the, the musicians turn the pa their pages to the next uh, movement, the epilogue. The, ba the bass drum has a formato or a pause on it, it keeps on rolling, and then the fanfare starts for the epilogue, the final, the final movement. That's why I put that, uh, the Navy band on this track. So I could see these two together. We'll see. All right, this brings me to this yellow lines. These are these are called on uh, um, well, is it envelopes or envelopes? I think it's envelopes. Okay. Uh, Cubase have quite a few kind of envelopes. So far, I discovered only two envelopes in this audio director software it is it's the, the these two okay the yellow and a green one and you can turn it on and off okay the yellow one is the volume of the specific clip it controls the volume these white dots are called nodes all right so um, what I've done here, you have your normal clips volume in the center, which is 127 divided by 2, which is around 64, I think. Okay, that is uh, like a mezzo forte forte volume. Okay, it goes a bit louder and then drops slightly and then fades out. As you can see, the bass drum here starts softly, but I found it's too soft. Okay, so I made it louder in this clip, you see? And as that one fades out, this one also f uh, goes softer, and I keep it at the center volume, while you'll see the waveform goes louder, because the music when I record it, it has a crescendo in it, so the, the waveform goes naturally louder. That's why I kept the volume straight. Okay, so just to demonstrate, I'll solo this track. You'll hear the bass drum goes louder. You see? So there's no need for me to to have the line go up and make the bass drum louder because it does so auto automatically already. All right, so I basically mixed the bass drum of this track 
and this track together so that it sounds almost like it's a continued a continuum you know no break into the bass drum roll so here it is <laughs> You see, okay, so that is what that is all about. Okay, so let me uh, try to demonstrate a bit more what's happening here. Okay, so a fanfare will start. Let's hear it. you can hear it goes louder it drops and then it grows in tempo and the, when the flutes start their trillings it starts softly and the, as you can see in the waveform the band makes a crescendo in this fanfare okay I try to keep uh, the volume low here because Johan will sing here. Let me solo him as well. Okay, so that is the other idea of, of, of this yellow line is to control the volumes so that you can mix. You can see I, I, I used Johan softly over here as well. I don't want him to, to sing full out yet. As you can see, I do make him louder later. Okay, so you'll use the the volume lines to do the actual volume mixing of all your clips, so that they 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 are balanced out with each other. Okay, you don't. You, uh, there's no other way actually to to use the buttons and stuff to to make your your clips. To, um, you know, and when you actually record your clips. You've got no idea if your next clip will be the same as your previous one, volume-wise. You know, uh, normalized the same way. So that's why you have this functionality where you can actually use this these volume lines, envelopes, to, to, to normalize your clips with each other so that they mix well together. Okay, so... Let me give you an idea of this, this ending here. I made that yellow line go up because I couldn't hear the little trumpet sounds there. Ta -da -da -da. Okay, so you will see when, um, when the line gets to this, when the slider gets to that, to that point, you will hear the, the, the trumpet a bit easier, uh, uh, a bit more clearer. Oh, hear us when we go. That line make a big crescendo because the horns. Let me just un unmute that line there, that clip. You'll hear the horns. I, I wanted them to scream out that run they have. 
Yeah, yeah, right. I think actually it could be it could actually be a bit, be a bit more. Um, So see. as you can see um, when you watch uh, these level mark um, levels here they are going into the red which is not good um, <coughs> it's not good it's, it's not a good sign of a good mix if he does that. One should always try to keep it in the green around here. Because once it goes into the red, uh, your speaker starts to distort. Uh, a sign of uh, amateur. Alright. Okay. So that is the yellow lines. Okay, what I've done here, it's also very interesting. Um, I wanted your hand to seem a bit more Pavarotti like, you know. Um, how does this go again? You know, with more feeling, and you couldn't get it, uh, you know, you couldn't really get it like that. So I decided to put the musicality in by using the volumes. So if I select this track and solo it, You can actually see how these lines can be used to put some a musical phrase to a line. Now remember, it is also in Zulu, so it's, it's not so easy for a, a white guy to to concentrate on musicality when he's got to to, to sing these difficult uh, the Zulu words. Okay, so let me demonstrate what. How you can put some musicality by using the volume lines. see uh, we did it in several takes we were che cheating a bit because um, actually because of the words the melody is not difficult but the words are you know and and uh, the, the Navy band has quite a few Zulu people in uh, as members of the band and they are always moaning oh we, we got the accent strong and this is not how you're supposed to say the words and so, um, so yes, uh, Johan couldn't concentrate, you know, on, on everything in like in within uh, an hour. So, uh, where does it start now? So let me play you this Amagora in Mendy. It's a beautiful song. Um, Shaka Zulu, the, the first king Zulu in uh, in South Africa. When was this? I think in the 1700s. He had a prophecy. He made a prophecy of some kind, and um, and this this is a hymn based upon that, or based on the words of that prophecy. Okay, so um, and then. A certain Mr. Jones, A. M. Jones, in 1932, composed a melody based on these words, 
but you wrote it, you wrote it in a tonic sulfur or sulfasia all right so um so uh, a guy in a native band wrote like a piano version of it and then another guy attempted an orchestral part of it and then i basically just enhanced it a bit or enhanced you know made it more orchestral okay so here is the amagora mendi i think it's quite a beautiful song idea of the Amagora in Mendi. Uh, as you can, um, I just tried to demonstrate to you here that um, one can do multiple clips to uh, to record a difficult song. Okay, uh, and then it sounds like one one piece altogether. Okay, and then you can also cheat a bit by using the volume lines. Um, the band, like I said, is, is uh, these are actually, it's not a, a real band, it is, um, it's a VST, a virtual instruments, and I must say it sounds, doesn't sound so bad at all, you know, if you, if you listen to it, it's, it sounds like, like almost a real band. <laughs> bad not too bad for virtual instruments I must say um, okay let's see what else we have here I actually want to get to the the crashing part and the sound effects okay this is the collision part okay we have the band on top and the collision, the sound effects is here. Let me just turn off all these arrow lines.
Okay, before we get to that, I just need to explain to you one more thing, and that is the green line. Okay, this is your panning line. Panning means in the stereo field, your left and right speaker or your earphones, headphones, left and right. Okay, so at the moment it is in the center, which means it will come out of both ears. If I take this line and I put it down here, you will hear. Just solo it. 34 days at sea yes. and our first sight of sea comes from the one one year. I wonder why, why the programmers put this thing over there and not uh, a bit more to the right or some other way to hide it because it's so difficult to get hold of these nodes, you know, when they are stacked up like this. I must write to them. Because what this means is it mutes the slip. You see, now it's muted. It will not play. And now it will play. This means there's a sound effect on this uh, clip here, which is a reverb. Okay. Um, I'll show you that just now. All right, if I move the line up, it goes to the other ear. Thirty-four days at sea. Okay. Okay, but if you have some rock and roll or some other funky stuff going, you can do quite nice things with this. I mean, you can just click on the note, uh, create new notes. You know and. play around, <laughs> you know, um, make your audience psychedelic or something. Thirty-four days at sea. <laughs> and you hear that? Okay, so that's the painting idea. Okay, I right click on the note and I just reset all keyframes. Okay. So that is the panning envelope, which I'll turn off as well now. Okay, you know about the solo now, to solo a certain track, not a clip, the whole track, okay? You can also mute a track, which means all the tracks will play except for that, that one track, because it's muted. I'll get to the recording part in a moment okay Let, let's, let's just go through this this beginning part here okay so over here I have um, the sound effects let's play it so you can hear it a fog horn There is the sea as the ship travels through, through the water now on its way to France. Okay, we have another sound effect coming up here. I think I should solo it. That's a fog horn at Plymouth Harbor. Right here comes the sonar. You see, here yeah, Johan is speaking during this time. The band is playing. Now Johan is starting to talk louder because the SS Darrow is on its way.
Now the troops are sleeping nicely and it's foggy in the evening and the Darrow is on its way to collide. Yeah, you'll see, it's now about 5 o'clock in the morning. That is the warning whistle. Attention. That's the Darrow. That's the Mendy making its alarm. The men starts waking up. And now it's a huge crash. <clears throat> now the ship is crashing under the water. The men The men are, flo uh, are, are floating in the ocean, jumping off the ship. So much for the sound effects. Uh, there was this uh, argument among us that why is there a woman shouting in the water? You know, um, but after some research, uh, I did. Uh, all ships have a sick bay and they have nurses, and it's quite conceivable that they had. Uh, uh, two or three nurses on board as well so there's no reason why there shouldn't be uh, a, a woman in the water uh, as well as I've discovered that many militaries had women disguising themselves as men to take part in this uh, war uh, for the benefits you know so um, quite frankly and then I've also heard an, another theory about hypothermia that is that if you if you're, if, if you're in freezing water your uh, vocal cords is like when you inhale helium and it sounds like uh, Mickey Mouse the pitch of your voice would rise uh, because of the freezing water and swallowing cold seawater and you know so there's no reason why your, your your voice will not raise in pitch as well. So um, I basically convinced uh, the commander that uh, it's either a man, Samuel in this case, who is shouting like that, or it could be a nurse. Why not? Okay, now let's hear the whole scene together with the the music playing with and show you the power of audio director. Thirty-four days at sea, and her first sight of England. Not really a sight. Because I only see grey fog and mist laden skies. I wrap my great coat tight about me, glad for its warmth. We are stopping at a place called Plymouth, and then tomorrow we are off to France to the war at last. I hear there is a danger of attack from the German U boats. Whatever next? Boats that sail in the waters, but we are guarded as we go by a British ship armed with guns, so we shall be safe. On the afternoon of the 20th of February 1917, the SS Mendy set sail to cross the English Channel, escorted by the British destroyer HMS Brisk. 
by six o'clock it was already dark and by midnight the fog was all enveloping. Just before 5 a.m. the next morning, 10 miles south of the Isle of Wight, as Mandy inched its way through the fog, another Allied steamship, the SS Darrow, traveling full speed, despite the appalling weather conditions, struck her, slicing into the heart of her to a depth of 20 feet. Many died that day, smashed by the bow of the SS Darrow. Many could not escape the blackness below decks and drowned in the freezing waters that rushed into the huge gap in the ship's side. Samuel was flung to the deck by the force of the collision. All the breath knocked out of his body. Below me there is a sea of darkness, men plunging into the rough cold water, singing, praying and crying. What shall I do? I can't swim. I've got no choice but to jump. God protect me, please. Cold. So very cold and tired. I hear my brothers calling me. Oh, Samuel, are you dead? that you do not hear my voice. I try to, but I cannot answer. I'm too cold, too cold. Then I hear the voice of Reverend Yoba calling out of us in the water. Be quiet and calm, my countrymen. You are going to die. But that is what you came to do. I, of course, I say, you are all my... Right, so... That is the collision of the SS Mendy. Um, the mock-up I've, I've sent to the commander. Um, then this is the, the aftermath. The last post. Uh, this is actually um, Carl Jenkins' version. <coughs> Excuse me, of the last post. Let's see. Um. Okay, that's Amagora and Mandy. I think you will recognize. It's from the armed man of the British King and for Africa. Of the 802 black troops on the SS Mendy, when it went down, only 195 survived. Among the 607 dead, prominent figures like the Pondoland chief Henry Pothleni and the Reverend Ayoba, but also many hundreds who were important only to their families, like young Samuel. For Samuel, there was no war to be. No fine deeds for the glory of the British King and for Africa. Okay, that's Carl Jenkins' last post from, I think it's a mass, the armed man. And then uh, it goes over to, now let me show you this. You will see these lines, it's called crossovers when I have uh, uh, the band they were playing a formata here oh, it's a timpani the timpani made a, made a roll but it stopped there while you have these bells oh where are we now Okay, um, 
just keep the rear view. All right. You hear these bells. Yeah, there are four bells struck in the Navy for some reason. A reason. Um, I'm not quite sure why they do it. Uh, I think it's when they have a memorial service, they struck a big brass bell four times. Okay, but the, 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 the problem was that the timpani ended too soon. So what I did, did is I used this cut tool and I, I cut out, as you can hear here, I cut out a, a bit of the timpani and I just pasted it a few times to extend the timpani. But instead of just putting it next to it, you'll hear a small little bra a break as it goes over into the next clip. Okay, but it's too soft. If you want, you can actually just move it slightly into the, the previous clip. And it will ask you a few questions to either overwrite that section, which means it will cut out that little section there, or insert it into that clip. You know? But I chose to cross fade it. Okay? This way. You can choose either linear, but the, I found that this way, uh, the one clip going softer while the other one going louder, it creates more of a, an even um, uh, normalization between the clips. So it'll put that, that those two lines there. Now it sounds like one roll, you'll hear. Yeah, there. Okay, then it goes to Eternal Father, and Hans sings it. And then the second verse. And then I must say, I've, I, I really like this African version of. Um, of this bridge passage that goes into the sunset. So, um, much for this for this file okay so once I've done this I uh, was kind of happy with the way it sounded and due to time constraints as well I thought okay now the, the boss better get these these uh, these mp3s on uh, my shared Dropbox folder as ASAP, so I produced the file. Okay, I gave it the file name. I selected a, a place in my sheet music folder where I keep all the Navy Band's music. I made a WAV file because a WAV file is uncompressed, which means every single little no one's is part of that file. Okay. And I gave it uh, a 48 kilohertz sample rate and a, 
a bit depth of 32 bits and obviously a stereo channel and you can uh, do a 5.1 7.1 as well but you're not making a movie in this case so obviously stereo is the, the option to choose and then I have produced it it made a WAV file in my folder and then and then I, I converted it into a, an mp3 which produced a, a, a better mp3 I've done that in um, in Adobe Audition it is you know Adobe Audition is it's, it's very similar to uh, audio director except that it, it has a, f a few extra effects I like the stereo image imagery you can expand the, ex the stereo field a bit you can add a VSTs to it uh, virtual instruments you know um, but I used it uh, the, the Adobe only to make an mp3 uh, because if I if you cannot see it now because there's no file loaded into it let me see if if it will still remember my recent Star Wars um, seems to be empty Anyway, um, I wonder if it will show now. I need to show you this. Um, okay. um, all right, I, I won't be able to show you that now, but um, normally uh, if I select a whole uh, mp3 which I just made I can save the selection as now I save it as an mp3 but you can choose the type of mp3 what it includes inside the mp3 file so um, it's a lossless file but um, you get like a variable bitrate versus a fixed uh, bitrate now uh, a fixed bitrate mp3 is larger you see a way by a, a variable bitrate is a certain part uh, will be a bit more compressed uh, uh, according to the bit depth and others will be a bit larger so you could have a smaller mp3 but also a better better quality mp3 you see and that's why i chose adobe editions mp3 converter which i think is the best so far for my purposes anyway okay uh, guys um that was jar jar binks um there are much more to the, the audio director i mean like i said you can add a movie to it and then um uh, uh, compose your music according to that uh, uh, to that movie you just imported I don't like doing it that way because I normally write a score in a notator like like Finale or Sibelius or Dorica and then because I need to print out the parts for the band and then I have all I need to do is export my file and I can import it into the into this Adobe director uh, I cannot really write a Navy Band score in Audio Director because it does not have uh, the VST functions. Um, you know, uh, it cannot print out notes. So uh, that's why I said it, sh it, it should be other way around. Uh, you should have Audio Director inside. Uh, power director 
for the movie functions because that's what audio audio director is all about it's about making your movies the, the sound part of it you see it's not a real door for 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 music publishing and so forth okay so um I might make a, an, another movie later on demonstrating the movie part of it just to show you what what happens if you lo load a movie into it but I think you've got a basic idea now of how to use uh, audio director you can um, oh well, I haven't even touched on this yet um, the effects part of it uh, if I might just quickly run just indulge me just one more second so I'm going to show you one of my favorite things let me just show you I'll solo the band what's happening here okay let me get to this bit here okay so I kind of like this surround banner. Okay. Let me show you what it does. In this case, it's not a 5.1 or 7.1 configuration. It is only a stereo field. So you have your couch and your two speakers. All right. Now you can select any clip you want. All right, and decide where you want that clip to play around you. Do you want it to come from behind you, or from the right, from the left? There are the walls, so you will have your early reflections and uh, reflections and and all that all those things calculated in this. Um, what do you call it? Um, uh, mathematical equations they use to calculate you know the, uh, the spanning business uh, there's a name for it in English um, I just cannot remember the name now for it okay uh, that's an algorithm algorithm yeah okay it's a very complex algorithm um, you know uh, which audio director and any door uses it calculates sound bouncing of walls and against other people and all those things to determine if an instrument is in front of another one or to the right or to the left uh, the string section is right in front of the orchestra close to the conductor close to your ears while the percussion is at the back of the orchestra so you'll need to put percussion you know the percussion more to the back and the tubers more to the right and the trombones there and basically the reed section in the center you know uh, solo singers or, or so forth will be around you as a conductor you can see this couch also as your conducting stand, so to speak, okay? And then uh, the tympan is normally here, the horns are over here. Um, so, just to, just to make it simple for now, um, I'll use this one clip just to demonstrate what it sounds like. Okay, so I'll, I've selected the area where I will start. I've selected this clip, the band, and now listen how the sound moves in this room. Okay. in front of you comes from behind you
interesting wouldn't you say so this will be very handy if you have like uh, sections uh, a brass section or string section or even solo instruments you know uh, have cornets or trumpets you know from you can choose the trumpets here then you can select another track and go go to the surround panel and put that one over there, you see. And then you can have like a real a real uh, virtual stage kind of setup, which is very, very handy. Now, I'm sure you can imagine if you have your 5.1 set up here with your five speakers how nicely you can you can do it in this audio director or any uh, any modern door actually okay so I find that uh, that plugin quite interesting um, where does it then start again here okay this nah, it's, it's more of a gimmick than anything else to make it sound like an old radio it doesn't I don't really hear any difference uh, here there's another thing here um, where is it uh, this does not work uh, removing uh, a vocal from uh, uh, um, you know from a, from a sound a sound file many times I wanted the singer removed from a mp3 or something because I just want to hear the band and that doesn't work um, basically because um, in a proper studio recording the vocals will be in the center of the stereo field so um, this this functionality of, of, of plugin removes the center uh, frequencies of the stereo field where the vocals are supposed to be but if it's not there it's not removed so it doesn't work okay um, this is a gimmick also um, let me just demonstrate it to you okay uh, if you want to uh, make your hand sound like Mickey Mouse uh, or Donald Duck I suppose 34 days at sea and our first sight of England not really a sight Doesn't work. because I only see grey fog and mist laden skies I wrap my great coat tight about no, me, where is it? glad for its warmth. We are stopping at a place called Plymouth, <laughs> and then tomorrow we are off to France, to the war at okay, last. Okay, this works. I hear there is a danger of attack from a German U-boats. What even next? Boats that sail under the waters. But we are guarded as we go by a British ship. Armed with guns, so Donald Duck. Okay, this is okay. This this works quite interesting. Okay, um, but I will not apply. Uh, I think what happened? Did it freeze? Okay. This is your equalizer. Uh, this is now when you get more serious and not playing around. Okay, um, the, the band, uh, the, the the genre is is more classical than pop or techno or something like that. So I would rather choose classical to give it a. The equalizer. Um, 
come on, man. Okay. Um, an equalizer sets your frequencies your, from the lowest frequencies to the highest, the bases to the top frequencies. Okay, now normally you will have sliders that you can select to put the bass up more or the top the top sections like a piccolo or something but in this case as I said it, it's made easier for the audience or for the user at least so you can choose like a preset but I think you can also have a custom one here it is yes so these are your lower frequencies, the bass. You can, so if I play, play the preview. 34 days at sea. Let me just unsolo it. Solo the band. Okay. Next section from here. Mons. who have a, uh, a keen ear will notice that this section they just played was actually the last post um, or, or rather uh, play the motif uh, I call it the Grim Reaper's Choice um, You see, pom 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 pom. That that motif, I, I take it throughout the whole piece. Um, even even here with Samuel. That's a collision. I think it's from here. from here yes from here listen to the cornets the the the, the trumpets you hear the last burst ta ta you see um actually go into Carl Jenkins last last post okay so um, so guys I think that is it for this for this round um, <laughs> the mouse okay um, okay those were the effects and then you just get the, uh, the audio uh, you can actually adjust the audio also um, you can boost it by decibels to make a certain clip louder okay um, if I select that and I make it 12 decibels louder <laughs> it's as you can see it will pop your eardrums 
Okay, where is the undo button? Yeah. Okay. Uh, fades will you'll use in probably in, in, in pop music when you fade in and fade out at the end of a song. Okay. And trimming audio is when you cut sections out of an audio audio clip. Adjust the length is uh, if your music doesn't fit uh, up to a certain point, you can just stretch it out a bit more while keeping the pitch the same. Okay, I suppose it will make it play a bit slower, but the pitch is the same. Okay, and reverse. I've got no idea what that what that is. Reverse the selected audio clip. Now, why on earth you would want to do that? I don't know. Okay. Um, there was one more thing, but what was it? Um, have we just we did discuss the markers, haven't we? Yeah. The markers is a good, good, good idea if you put markers. At, uh, in, like in my case, in the beginning of each movement, so when you write a CD, it will use those markers as your tracks on a CD. So if you you have your markers and you you name it, it will then write on the CD Reaper's Choice. And in the freezing water, it will actually use your markers as the different tracks on the CD if you choose to do so. Okay. Um, I think you've got the basic idea how to run or how to use this. There are much more to it. Um, if you double click a, a, a clip, you get into this um, edit section here. And now you can really uh, do some funny stuff with it, you know. Um, like over here, I've used this bit to take out certain noises. Like I tried to take out that woman's voice, you know, and I was searching for it. And you can actually edit, edit a piece and and and, and fix it, you know, and take take out what you don't want. But it takes a lot of practice and getting to know your your software to, to, to do that okay um, the restore room like I said okay that is to take out a lot of a lot of um, noise clicks pops hiccups all that kind of stuff like over here you have silence but it's not really silent because you can see the, uh, it should be like this there shouldn't be a blue line this is absolute silence so there are some noise over there you see the same over here but don't just go and delete that now because it, it will shift that section there and put your whole clip out of sync with the rest of your timeline so don't delete it just uh, make the decibels like zero Okay, that is it. A Sela for now. Okay, uh, I hope I've, I've shown or I taught you something. Um, I'll put up some more videos in the future, and you know, as I get to know this thing also better. But I uh, uh, watch my channel because I'm making many movies on how to use Sibelius. Okay, and also Dorico. As I learn Dorico, I will also show you how to use Dorico. Okay, may you have a blessed day further, and uh, we'll see each other again. Greetings from Cape Town. I hope you have a pleasant evening. Goodbye.